Hey, sweetheart. Is my powder all okay? Yes, Dad. Where are you and Sean? Well, I've been working from home, and Sean Wonder has really caught up with me. Oh, very good morning, very good evening, ladies and gentlemen. Thank you for inviting me for the session. My name is Rohit Singhla. I'm the EVP Global Marketing for Sapiens Analytics. Today, we're going to be talking about workforce analytics and how can we use data to augment productivity and drive business results. So that's the topic, kicking it into full gear. Well, um, I am sure a lot of you would have experienced the high tide trying to surf through the big waves. COVID-19 has surely hit us absolutely like something that we have never seen before. Some of us have been successfully able to ride the wave who were already into the dig digital transformation phase of using data and analytics. Some of us are still learning to surf. But overall, if we really see how all of us have done, I would say we could have definitely done better if we were prepared. So for us, the important thing is how can we use all of what we have existing and how can tools in the market help us to drive business results using a lot of analytics and data, and of course, at the end of the day, help our employees. One of the things that has really stuck me uh, in, in this new way of working is how organizations have moved away from the, from the wallpapers in the office to trying to get backgrounds for Zoom or Teams. So again, the, the, the change that has happened for all of us has been phenomenal. We are all looking to make the best of the change, but definitely it is something that we need to take a pause and appreciate as well. All of our lives are changing. Over a billion people have been impacted. A billion knowledge workforce all across the world have been impacted with what we have seen with the new, what we call as the way of working the new wow. And apart from that, we don't even know how long it is going to exist, how long it is going to take for all of us to come back to the normal way of working. And the workplace has changed to the extent that our remote work force is struggling. 71%, that is a lot of number. That's a lot of percentage for all of us as leaders to manage. The work-life balance as a factor is important for 73%. So for us, if you look at how the organizations are changing, the workplace is changing, we all need to adjust to the new normal. We all need to make sure that we are prepared to be able to use all at our disposal, all the tools, technology, and processes at our disposal to help make better decisions for the organizations. We know human productivity is the new currency. And if you look at the stats that we have seen from the workplace research, it talks about 2.4K dollars in terms of increase in profits by just increasing 10% of investments in employee engagement. It's a choice that we all have to make and companies with engaged employees outperform, as it say, 202%. That's a lot of currency that we can look at as leaders. Contingent worker expansion. Talent sharing model, they are talking about, you know, the future of work at 80% for 80%. FTE being replaced by contingent workers, 32%, no longer as, as a CIO or a COO, I really need to worry about the location or the geography of my FTE. So why can't I augment my current staff? Why can't I look at a mix of a, a hybrid model, be it the way of working or hybrid model of my workforce to be able to make the best for the organization? We are in situations, in a situation which we have never been before. COVID-19, which started seven to nine months back, um, has impacted all of us. So there is a certain situation that we all have to be cognizant of aware of and really see how we're going to move the needle. Remote work, as they're saying, is not a blip. It is going to be here. And 25%, I also read recently, Forbes talked about not more than 30%, again, ranging from 25 to 30%, depends on uh, which part of the world you're in, that employees want to return back to the workforce, uh, sorry, <laughs> return back to the office and be a part of you know, the regular office workforce. They would like to work from home. How do we, as leaders make sure that we have a fine balance of all of the hybrid way of working 
at the same time ensure that efficiency, effectiveness, productivity, engagement, all are taken care of. And we use again workforce analytics, which is just beyond using, using certain HR systems, HR data to be able to make this happen. There is a lot of complication that brings in. Uh, the, the simple example um, that we see is a grandmother uh, talking to uh, the boss over the phone uh, on the video conference and saying, hey, your employee, my son is actually working from home. This is really not the home office that was set up. So there's, there's a fine balance. We are seeing single working mothers or fathers having a tough time trying to balance working from home and the all of the office work to be done. And of course, the, it brings in its own sets of anxieties, its own sense of burnouts that we have to be extremely careful of. And the complications, again, depends on the part of the world you're in. There could be connectivity issues. My two teen daughters have their own classes going on. They have to be extremely, uh, what do you call, attentive as well, because they are have to give their exams, they have to submit their uh, projects all online. So how do we manage when am I supposed to be getting up? When are they, they are supposed to be getting up? When I'm supposed to be having my conference calls? There's a set of complications that have come in. There's also a complication of laid back. How do I know my employees, be it contingent workers, my workforce are all staying on top of the game because it's not only one industry that has been impacted, it's the entire building workforce that has been impacted. So we have to, again, rely a lot on technology as, as compared to what we had done before, because there's no close proximity right now for us to be able to engage and work together. So as I was mentioning earlier, for us at Sapiens, we call this as the new wow. We call it the new way of working in the world that has happened. We, and we believe this is going to continue as a hybrid model, not today, but for the foreseeable future. Some of the experiences that you might be having as leaders, as managers, could be the employees' lack of time management. It's not because they don't want to, but because of how they're working from home. When am I getting up in the morning? When am I sleeping at night? The presentism. Am I only there to look green so that my manager or my peers feel I'm working? The distractions and the impact on co-work, which is very high that we believe. Work-life balance, work-life integration, all of the things that needs to happen. How do I ensure that employee and employer, the managers are all on the same page. Employers are struggling, we believe, with a lot of visibility into the work activities. Now, again, if depends on the vertical you are in. So this is from a global perspective. It could be impacts on productivity that you have seen. You have seen different reports which say productivity increase, productivity decrease. It all depends on the organization and the tools and technology that you have been leveraging to make sure it happens. And of course, it is important in terms of the engagement itself. We don't want disengaged employees because you would lose the best of employees that you might have if they're disengaged. Distractions. The important thing that uh, I brought, wanted to just share with all of you was the patterns have changed. The usage consumption have changed in terms of the social media or the different TV usage patterns. Again, this is not to say that um, my workforce is actually all distracted, but there is distraction that has seeped into the system because I am working from home. I may not have all of, uh, you know, few bedrooms for me, myself, my daughters are occupying most of the space in the in the in the in the house to work in certain uh, places where distractions may happen. So again, the consumption has highly increased. And what Forbes talked about a while back is that lockdown on and off may not go down till 2022. Even if the vaccine is out, there could be different modes across the world. So the distractions themselves are very important for us to look at. Burnouts, we believe all of the employers have to be extremely cautious and cognizant. So again, the point is, how do I use what is at my disposal or what is in the industry in terms of the technology and the tools to be able to help manage all of this uh, different aspects and elements of, way of working the new wow? Because we don't want an epidemic to set in after the pandemic of burnouts. And then we are talking about wellness and health because WHO talked about employee wellness and health as one of the top criteria for employees to look at. Now, the board would also be asking. In 2013, we had only 1.9% of the organizations working from home or the workplace, uh, uh, my digital workforce working from home. Now it's gone up to more than 90%. So do the digital systems exist for 
continuous management, for continuous evolution in the new reality of the workforce? So that's again a very important question that has been asked. I found this lovely pictorial representing how we all leaders, while I was working for uh, you know Fortune 5 companies, we talked about digital transformation quite a bit, and and you know we always had that let's put a strategy or three to five year plan in place. But now, COVID-19 hit. We really don't have time to change. We had to adopt the change, and we had to make sure that it's done at a very at at a warp speed. And, we, and a very interesting uh, you know, analytic that we found from Gartner was the digital transformation tech funding, especially in the business intelligence or the data analytic solution space has increased tremendously. That goes to say the, uh, that leaders are looking at using analytics, the power of data to be able to manage the workforce. And what our uh, experience again has been in terms of workforce analytics, having done this for 11 years now and running, that workforce analytics really helps leaders take informed decisions using data at their disposal, not across just from a certain set of systems, but across the entire ecosystem of technology and tools that they have. And we see that the investments are increase and they will only increase further, which is also very interesting to, for us to know that up to 70% of organizations spent could be on your knowledge workforce. So is your exec team prepared to answer the questions from your board and major investors of how are you managing up to 70% of the spend that happens in the organization in your workforce for the new work from home? How are you measuring productivity? Are you making sure that there's a fine balance between productivity, efficiency, effectiveness, and the engagement that is happening? Because again, it's up to 70% of the investment in an organization. So again, the execs and all of us may not know what the future has in store, but the future of work is going to be different. It's going to be a hybrid model. It could be working from home, working from anywhere. It could be working across borders. We saw that nearly 25% to 30%, there's a shift in having contingent workforce rather than workforce of my own or employees. I could have uh, nearly again 25 to 30% of my workforce is not planning to come back to the office. So how do I manage this future of work is important. Tools, technology is what we would be relying on heavily. That brings me to how we can use workforce analytics to augment productivity and drive business results. Having done this successfully and having over thousand of, um, you know, thousands and thousands of uh, customers that we have interacted with, prospects we have interacted with, employees that we have interacted with, we believe we need to move away from the gut feel. We need to move away from using a crystal ball to really define a future and see how do we want to make our business decisions? How do we drive, want to drive results using workforce and all of the data underlying and all of the gold mine that we have to be able to surface it and again, make informed decisions. Employee productivity monitoring data has multiple sources. We would all agree if you look at all of the nine and of course growing as well, it could be time clock data, it could be biometric, which again would be a combination now because we may not have all the employee or the all, all the workforce going back to the office, the physical workplace itself, the meetings that we are having, the individuals and the team, the devices, the chat, the workstations, the application, it could be it could be anything else in this particular ecosystem that forms a part of all of the digital signatures that we have. How can we bring all of them together rather than just one system giving me all of the fantastic data and then I'm not getting across my system? So how can I consume all of these digital signatures, these digital footprints that my workforce is actually using, again, to define performance target, the activities and analysis? This is a fantastic chart from Gartner that we believe embodies a lot of what um, the, the leaders would be facing in terms of a combination of devices, a combination of sources, which again needs to be captured for creating analytics. We know there are limits to traditional analytics. Uh, they, every organization has successfully done it in its own, uh, I would say, ecosystems. It could be microsystems or it could be, uh, you know, kind of uh, across functions. 
like the PMS system, the performance management, the LND, or it could be the visitor management system, the ticketing system, or the recruiting system. We believe the traditional analysis analytics was done, which was which had fragmented multi multi console view. It used to op, you know offer a lot of subjectivity, centric view rather than objectivity and a kind of manager to manager. Some of them lacked again advanced analytics and ml capability remember well, my view is all about how do i get the entire ecosystem together to be able to present rather than have individual functional ecosystems and then making disparate decisions and there were of course massive data sets to be siphoned through we use different technology and different tools but no single way of consuming all of the data all of the resources coming together and making decisions so that's where we believe organizations now are looking for speed, flexibility, efficiency, and transparency from their partners and the vendors. They're looking at providers who can help them with these four axes and make them successful in the digital transformation journey that has again hit us all as a surprise. And we are adopting, of course, doing it successfully. The C-suite, again, has to collaborate to lead all of the workforce productivity. It cannot be in isolation. We'll have to manage the outsource vendor spend. It could be a combination of you know, time and material. It could be a combination of your uh, fixed bid. It could be your managed services. Because the CFO would have their sets of data. Your employee, your vendor manager, your CEO, they'll have different sets of data. So there'll be software data, there'll be employee data, there'll be vendor data, device data. If you looked at how traditional systems work, so there were different uh, data points and every one of the function had their own set of tools to be able to manage the analytics that came out of it. The new paradigm shift where we believe is going to be critical for the C-suite to be looked at, looking at. So we need scientific driven data analytics. So if, if you look at it, we need uh, a, a central system or we need a tool or a platform or a solution that is going to help us consume data across the systems and create a holistic view from people to infrastructure. People, process, technology, tools, infrastructure, all of it together. The end user experience management is going to be important as the chief employee experience officer comes in and partners with the CIO. Uh, we don't want a different system to be you know, kind of measuring and helping us with how is the CPU utilization, the health of my systems or when my uh, workforce is working remotely. I want to also link the financial and business processes together. Again, not disparate systems, but how can I get a clean, connected story to be able to make decisions based on data rather than just gut feelings? So again, holistic view, consumption, of all of the different data points, all of the signatures to be able to create a holistic view and scientific data analytics. A Fitbit for the workforce would be the best. A Fitbit that is gonna help me with all of uh, the pulse of the organization, like a Fitbit beautifully does it. A Fitbit also allows me to invite people. It also allows me to compare myself. It also allows, but again, privacy at the core. I am the owner of my data and whoever I want to share with, it helps me, it allows me and different parameters. It does it on a daily basis. It's a reflection for me to be able to do better as an individual. And of course, if it is used as, as, as a family, it helps the family to improve on parameters as you compare, as you become more competitive. But the analytics that comes out of it is extremely crucial because I can make informed decisions rather than gut feel decisions using a Fitbit. So for us, again, a Fitbit for the workforce is important. That's where democratizing data in an organization is crucial. How can I consume data from different sources? As I was talking about, uh, where there's a paradigm shift from how organization used different systems to how we can create an ecosystem of having central repositories or central systems that is going to help me consume all the data across people, process, technology, and tools, and be and help me with actionable insights. Help me with predictive analytics, which is going to be very important. And of course, as we move to prescriptive analytics in the AI space, of how can I make decisions in the new way of working using technology, using data, and surfacing it up through my analytics. It's also important to note as the world moves, and we saw Gartner 
talked about investment in the SaaS technologies in the data and analytics space. How can the CIOs manage it very effectively and efficiently? So it's going to be important that the backbone that is set up, be the security and privacy, the DevOps and the IoT, again, some table stakes in the world right now, but the user administration, I don't want to have an overhead for my CIO organization to be able to manage what I'm deploying. So the important aspect that I want to highlight here is all these have to be brought together in the new WOW to have the C-suite get what they need in terms of the data, the analytics, the actionable insights, and for the administration and the management. So again, democratizing data is going to be critical. We don't want data only in the hands of certain leaders to be able to make decisions, but different levels of the organization, be it the C-suite, be it the managers, be it the employee, get the data that they need to make and of course be more successful. It's important. Why? Because I have changed, I have moved from being a third bird to a lark, where now my work pattern is important. So how do I again use data that exists? How do I use what already exists in the, in the organization to be able to identify what are the work habits of my employees, of my workforce? Now with you know organizations moving towards you know going 25% uh, more of contingent workers, they will be across the world. So work habits is extremely important for us to identify and be able to adjust to not uh, not only to how uh, an employer wants work to be done, but how an employee is going to actually manage work. So I, I look at Twala. This is something that uh, that my younger daughter, she, she's into uh, dance and she's into all of the creatives. She actually taught me in this in this eight to nine months how important it was to have a good work habit because I, I really admire her regime, how dedicated in terms of a diet and everything. When I correlate it back to an employer, it's important for us as an employer and for employees to know what the work habits are because that's the only time creativity is going to become a habit rather than me just trying to make a point change and bring in something. So a continuous evolution of showing how the habits work. And uh, one of the things that uh, me and my daughters love to watch, of course, is Kung Fu Panda. It made me realize that the only thing that we can help bring in change for our employee is self-reflection, the self-actuation, the self-governance, the self-improvement. And that can happen by using system and tools that help an employee see their work habits, their work patterns. How much time are they spending in meetings vis-a-vis? -vis? How much time are they spending somewhere else? Again, using the power of workforce analytics to be able to increase productivity for an employee and individual because I see my reflection now. So that's the new digital paradigm shift that we believe is going to be important. All of it because we want to empower our employees. We want to empower our knowledge workforce. We want them to be able to lead all of these so the leaders provide the inf entire infrastructure, the backbone, what tools and technology is needed. At the end of the day, it is for the employee and the knowledge workforce to be able to consume and do the best that they can, which is again, what we believe in the new digital you know, nomadism world, it's going to be important. Firms need to provide customers with solutions. So this is again, uh, a belief that is coming from our experience of 11 years, is we can help organizations uncover hidden capacity. We can help them with team effectiveness, work life integration, and effective outsourcing. Could be an could be a service provider or a service consumer. So while I was um, again working for um, one of the largest organizations in the world, the the World Bank out of uh, Washington D.C., it was imp very important for us to see how all of our uh, countries were performing vis-a-vis -vis the vendor and the resource and the partners they had. So I wish I had a tool which could help me at that point of time. Uh, get all of this data, consume all of this data, and create fantastic workforce analytics. Again, you know, be be scientific in way we are making decisions. Of course, data to answers is going to be ubiquitous. We need organizations to really work on how well they can use all of the data and the system that exist. So we, you know, moving to augmented analytics is going to be a natural shift. It's going to be a natural evolution for organizations. Uh, a, a bit of a, a busy slide, but the important thing that we want to bring to you, uh, you know, I wanted to share with you was how we need to move from the left to the right, how we need to move just from having reports and KPIs to actually getting into insights, predictive and prescriptive, which is the foresights. All of this can happen. We have all of the technology and tools in the market, 
to help make that happen. So the human inputs at the end of the day would be driving decisions and actions that would at the end of the day drive business results. So how can I use all of the information that I have in a system, which is descriptive as we know. The analytics workbench, can I provide a very powerful BI tool? Can I provide uh, a citizen data science model where, uh, again, democratizing data, maybe making it ubiquitous for anybody in the organization, be it uh, an HR function, be it uh, um, you know uh, any one of the engineering functions, or could be finance, could be marketing. How can I provide a workbench or a services, a self-service for exploring and diagnosing for organizations again and functions to be able to use uh, all of the workforce data. How can uh, or it could be either workforce data or it could be infrastructure data or tools data. A data lab laboratory is going to be important where we use machine learning to bring in insights. We want to use NLP to be able to type in and say, hey, I would like to know um, what is the engagement level for my uh, function uh, or my organization that is driving the portal for um, the Black Friday, or it could be my, my Christmas vacation is coming. How am I going to make sure in a retail organization that am I equipped to be able to support all the traffic that I would be getting? So can I use predictive analytics? Can I use insights from that space? And of course, the ultimate for us, the way we are looking to move and we believe all of the thought leaders, all of the C-suite is going to move is going to be the AI space where I want to provide a personal digital assistant for each one of my employee and my employers. Again, using all of the data analytics capabilities right residing in my organization to be able to make actionable insights or able to get actionable insights and make informed decisions. Again, moving to the augmented analytics is going to be critical. Just a quick uh, recap of how Sapiens Analytics Sapiens view or we keep employee privacy at the core and we enable organizations to again have scientific uh, decision making capabilities using all of their people process technology infrastructure and tools in the system. What we have seen in the market again is uh, for our customers we are pr very proud to say uh, again the numbers are here 10 million dollars 90 day implementation 15 million uh, savings across client facing back office operations 12 million savings this is all using the workforce analytics combination of people process technology and tools surfacing all of the data as a part of kpis as a part of reports as a part of decision making system where the c suite was able to save dollars uh, i just want to bring uh, yeah, coming to the close of uh, of my session is we may or may not believe in Methuselah. Methuselah in, in some cases is a myth, in some cases is reality. It depends who you talk to. It is the star beyond the Big Bang. So there's always a debate. There's always a discussion about whether it exists or not. So we can keep talking and debating about it. We can also keep talking and debating about data, how important it is. We can have two sides of the coin for sure. Some people say data is the new oxygen, data is the new oil. A data is here to stay. I might have used the word data, uh, I'm sure a few dozen times in my entire session today. It is all upon what leaders believe in. It is all upon how do I, as, 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 as an employer, want to best use and leverage what already exists in the system, but use more advanced tools that can help get all of this message together in a very scientific manner, like a manager of manager councils, move from you know system of reports to a system of actions. How do I bring in all of the change that I want? Because Sophia is here to stay. Sophia would be a part of the organization coming soon. She is going to be a part of how the way or the future of work looks like. A combination of humans, a combination of bots and robots, and so on and so forth. So, do I have system that can capture? Is my current tool that I'm using IoT enabled? Can I get all of the data together to be able to say, how am I going to be running my organization? How am I going to be running my firm, which is really a global organization, be it a small, mid or a large enterprise? It's all how am I going to be using and seeing this data? I'm sure leaders at the end of the day will be making a decision. Where do they want to move from? Where are they currently to where do they really want to step into? But all of it is important because we believe we all need to think change. It's difficult, like Methuselah, it could be difficult in change of the organization from place A to B. We have been hit uh, by a certain uh, pandemic. 
we all need to think change. In some places we'll be comfortable and the others not. Employee first is going to always remain important as the epicenter for an organization's success because lifting a customer would happen when you have employee first in the organization. So for us, this is what we want to share. And again, thank NASCOM for giving me this opportunity to share my thoughts on how we can use workforce analytics to drive productivity in an organization and use all of the advanced technology and tools that we currently have in the market. Again, thank you very much. Have a great day.